By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against a player who's playing with a Time Vault combo deck. And that's the player on the left. And his name is Hank. Now, if um, you don't know what this deck is about, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. And when you go to that little video, I give a little introduction about how a Time Vault deck usually works. Now, I am playing on the right and I'm playing with my Guardian Beast deck, the Beast's Toys. And I've also played with this deck before. And if you click on the info card that's appearing right now, it'll take you to a movie where I show you my deck list or actually the deck picture. And I give a little explanation about how uh, the deck works. Now, I have made a few changes. I've taken out uh, the Paralysis for Terrors and I believe I've put in an Icy Manipulator instead of the um, non-bow combo that was in here, <laughs> the not working combination with the bottle of Suleiman, and, and some old small changes. Maybe we'll see them in action in this game. Um, let's quickly go to the match and, and see how this will end up. Game number one with the Time Vault player on the play here, playing a Black Vice. And it's interesting to think about that these decks wouldn't have been very powerful like a Time Vault deck when the old restriction list was still there with only one Time Vault to play in your deck, but also only one Black Vice. I don't really know when it got unrestricted in uh, Swedish. If you know, let me know in the comments um, below. But it, it, it's not that long ago. I believe three years ago. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. But anyway, then this deck would look completely different. Um, so looking at the situation here i've had a really good start here with a classic opening of dark ritual into a hypnotic specter wow and look at that really nice boomerang so that's gonna set me back playing a soul ring here oh and this is brutal playing a time or a mind twist here for two and taking out look at that losing an abyss oh and that's very important losing a demonic tutor so that demonic tutor is very important and remember, I still have that Hypnotic Spectre in my hand to cast the next turn. So I'm passing turn here. On 16, by the way, because of the Black Vice damage. And there's a Black Lotus. It's a pretty good top deck here. But only two cards in hand, so I wonder what cards they are. And with this deck, he, what he needs now is a Howling Mind. He needs to start drawing cards. Oh, or he needs a Time Twister. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. He's so lucky. Wow. Okay. Well, great. Good for him. And I'm also losing my Hypnotic Spectre here. At least I get to draw a new hand because my hand was pretty empty as well. But remember, he still has two lands untapped. He hasn't played a third land and he's going to draw a complete new hand. And I believe he's playing with a full set of Moxen. Although I'm not 100% sure, but I believe he does. So there is a big chance here that we're going to see a really crazy turn. So turn three. There you go. Mox Jet and a Mox Ruby. And the Black Lotus again. Wow. Of course, another Black Vice. Why not? And a Howling Mine. And he's passing turn. That means six damage for me. Look at that. I'm going down to ten. And I've had a really, really good draw, but still I'm on 10 and I'm kind of like, he's putting me in, in a corner here. I just need to get rid of a lot of cards here. Oh, deciding to take back that swamp, but play a um, Mishra's Factory instead. Playing a Dark Ritual, having three mana, floating three black, using two black. And playing a Hypnotic Spectre, meaning I have one colorless floating as well. And I'm, I'm basically thinking now, how can I lose as many cards in this game? I have three mana left. And maybe my opponent is going to counter something because he wants to respond. So he's sacking his Black Lotus here to counter the Hypnotic Spectre. Now remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish. So that's why he's not taking a damage here for mana burn. I'm playing another Hypnotic Spectre. So I'm really successful here in emptying my hand. But I am playing against a Time Vault deck. And... When that goes off, it's going to be really difficult for me to get back here. 
Playing a soul ring, only one card in hand, so it's it's looking pretty good for me actually. Oh, and he's playing a stasis. Oh, and maybe that's a lifesaver for him here, because I'm taking still taking two damage here, so that means I've had five in hand. Now I have seven in hand. I'm attacking, so I'm able to deal two damage. And playing an animate that because I just want to empty my hand. That's what I want to do. I'm only on eight life here. So despite the fact that I've had a pretty good draw, oh, look at this, oh, look at this. Going to six, that second Howling Mine is really, I think, the nail to my coffin. Wow, what can I do here? Playing a Dark Ritual. Being able to attack here at least. Going to 17, it's not gonna really gonna help. I need to get rid of that stasis, but I mean, I can't play a disc. I just don't have any mana. It's not untapping. And because he's drawing three cards, there's a pretty big chance that he's finding islands. And what is he doing now? Interesting. Playing a Time Vault here. So he can give me an extra turn, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to give me an extra turn, and that's it. That's game. Bam. <sighs> well, I mean, uh, this can happen. I'm still a little confused because I really had a good draw and I felt like I was in the game, but I lost the game. So first game for you. And let's quickly go to game number two and see if I can uh, if I can do something here and make it a 1-1 and take it to a third game. Game number two is about to start and at least I'm on the play. I mean, that stasis with the Black Vice lock was just brutal there in game one. Let's see what I can do now. I do feel that with the Dark Rituals that I play, I kind of have some, some more options here than if I would be playing another deck. Um, he's playing a Howling Mine here, and I'm playing a Sinkhole over his island, playing a play set of Sinkholes, and really, really enjoying that. And you have to understand that in old school, you know, you see so many specialty lands. Of course, you've got Library of Alexandria, but you also have um, your Mistress Factories. You also have... A, ton of dual lands you have city of brass so there's always a nice target for your land removal and here it is i'm playing scenic poltergeist and this is actually a new card in my deck and it works really well with the artifacts that i have because they're all non-creature artifacts because then they're protected by the guardian beast and they also work really well against those do you see them there moxen so i can kill moxen this is a mox killer because what it does it says Tap to turn target non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its casting cost. So that means that those Knights Mox in there become zero, zero creatures. So I'm really happy with this and, and hopefully it can stay on the table. My opponent doesn't have two blue to play a boomerang. Playing a demonic tutor. And can my opponent find something to get rid of the Xenic Poltergeist? I hope not. I just, I really want to use the Xenic Poltergeist to kill a Mox. That would just be so cool. And of course, I know that. Ooh, and there it is. There's a Black Vice. So, I mean, that's, of course, a problem for me here. But at least my Xenic Poltergeist is still there. So I can continue kind of denying the mana. Playing a Mishra's Workshop here and using it to... No, I'm not doing that. I'm taking it back, it seems. Okay. I'm first doing something else. Playing a Demonic Tutor. Okay, okay. So I'm going to make it difficult for me here. Playing a Demonic Tutor, looking up a card. And there I kind of changed my mind. I actually... I find it really difficult to play with Demonic Tutor, especially when I'm playing a new build, because I don't always know what I want to look up, and it's really something that I have to practice. Um, and I know that a lot of players simply use their Demonic Tutor to um, tutor for an Ancestral Recall. But, you know, Demonic Tutor is really interesting, interesting card. And it just gives you so many options. So now I'm using my Xenic Poltergeist to kind of kill his Mox Pearl. And oh, there you go. I'm playing um, I'm playing a disc here. And that makes sense because if I use the disc, I kind of explode his Howling Mines. And Howling Mines are very, very important for his deck 
to kind of find islands for a stasis, but also to find twiddles for his time vault, to find the time vault itself. Actually, I think it's one of the most important pieces in his entire deck. So you want to get rid of those Howling Mines. I mean, it's very tempting to leave them in the game because they feed you cards. But trust me, when you're playing against a deck like this, you want to get rid of those Howling Mines ASAP. So let's see what my opponent can do here. All I need is one more go. Oh, and there's a boomerang. Oh man, and that's setting me back again. So that means ton of damage for me, but it's also setting me back again. And it means he's gonna get another nice draw step with three cards and potentially finding what he needs to lock this game down. Because I know when I play against these decks, I just, you know, I have to get rid of those Howling Mines. What can I do? I'm playing a Mishra's Factory. And getting rid of his second island here. Getting rid of his mock. So really my plan is just to deny mana that even when he draws into the cards that he's looking for, that he will not have enough mana to kind of cast the cards. So I'm hoping for that. But the chances of him finding another land with one drawing three cards is pretty high. What I don't want to see here is a time walk. So there's an underground uh, sea here. And he just keeps... Okay, there's another boomerang. Oh, that's the other card that I really don't want to see. Look, I'm on 13. And, I mean, I have control, but I'm taking so much damage here. Oh, and I need to get rid of that Black Vice. And again, this is the third time I'm casting this disc. And there you go, playing another sinkhole. And playing anime debt and taking back there my guardian beast so this is pretty good and i'm just really hoping that he doesn't find a time walk or another boomerang i, I believe he's already played two boomerangs oh and look at that a black lotus and this is kind of a mistake on my part because i'm animating the lotus straight away but i mean my opponent knows that i can do that and look what he does now he's second the black lotus for three blue Playing a time for playing a twitter, twiddle, taking an extra turn, playing another twiddle. Yeah, and I actually believe this is kind of end game here. Because now he's taking another turn with another twiddle. And you see that dice moving up and up. So he's already got two extra turns after this turn. Playing Ancestral Recall here, drawing three extra cards. Taking his extra turn, meaning he gets to draw three more cards. Oh, and here you can see how quickly it can go when you're playing against a Twiddle Volt deck. Oh my goodness. Disenchant, of course. Taking care of my last hope. Oh, but that's not possible because of the Guardian Beast. Okay, so at least that's something. So he's taking care of the Guardian Beast by disenchanting that anime dead. All I need is a turn, but I don't think I'm going to get it. And I'm on nine. Remember that as well. I'm on nine. The vice is still there. There are two black vices actually now. I don't think I'm going to survive this. If he has... Yeah, that's what I want to say. If he has a stasis, it's game. This is game. Look at that. Going to three life, taking on my turn. I don't know why actually, because I don't think I can win this one. And I can. Showing my hand. That's it. That's game. Oh, so brutal. So brutal. I felt... I really felt like I could... Could have taken this one somewhere. I mean, I had my Scenic Poltergeist. I was killing Moxon. I was taking his land away. Did I make a mistake somewhere in this game? Please let me know. Um, anyway, uh, Hank, that's a player I was playing against. Congratulations. You've won again, man. 2-0, uh, well done. And I'm looking forward to play against this deck again. It's, uh, it's very interesting. It's really nice how you use the Stasis and the Time Vault. Um, you know, Stasis is not the main character in this build, but it's it's still, it's very important in this build uh, because the Stasis in both games was kind of like the final nail in the coffin when you say, boom, and now I'm putting my Stasis down. It was really uh, the end of the line here. Well played um, and Thank you for uh, for this match. 
Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen or have a look on the channel. I believe we have more than 70 movies for you. If you want to help the channel, please subscribe. That's really a big help. Leave a like, uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any suggestions how to further improve my deck or if I made any mistakes. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks and see you next time. Ik het was fikker te somber gezien.